I've been asked to make this video for quite some time now. Here it is. <laughs> How to hit on girls. Um, this is from my own perspective of being hit on and the best advice I can think to give. <laughs> but to be honest with you all, I'm not sure how successful these tips may be. <laughs> that's, that's your warning. Um, so let me know, I guess, if you end up trying out any of this. <laughs> or if you're another girl with any other tips, leave them in the comments below. Let's help, let's help people out. <laughs> but um, let's get started. I have everything not in any specific order. So <laughs> the first tip, okay. Not to be shallow, don't kill me, not to be shallow, but check your standards. Look at yourself and ask if your standards are achievable for what you bring to the table. And of course, there's no harm in hitting on people who you think may be out of your league, uh, because hey, you never know, really. But if you have no luck at all in dating, the common denominator may be you, unfortunately. And I don't mean changing yourself entirely. You can make minimal changes, but put in extra effort and self-care and it'll be noticeable. Again, not to be shallow, but be aware of how you look, smell, and act. Put in some effort, honestly. Whatever that means for you individually, it'll show you care about yourself and are put together and know what you're doing. Even if that isn't necessarily true, it's an important illusion. <laughs> It'll make you feel more confident in yourself too. And you need to be as confident as you can. But don't be an asshole. <laughs> Confidence is so attractive because it makes it seem like you really know what you want. You really know what you're looking for. That in turn makes the person feel desirable. Being shy can be cute, don't get me wrong, but it's a bit more difficult to navigate because sometimes it can come off as creepy even if that's not the intention. Don't get too invested too soon. Yeah, I know, that's a tricky one. <laughs> when you are into the other person way more than they are into you, it can be really creepy. Or it can be perceived as love bombing which is toxic. Uh, think about it this way. If you did get into a relationship after starting off super, super strong, it's more likely going to fizzle out a lot quicker and lose passion, and you don't want that. Try and think of fun date ideas. I love this one. <laughs> there are easy dates, like going to the movies and going out to eat, and that's all fine and good, but you'll really stand out to someone if you find a perfect date that suits both of your personalities. Body language is so important. Make sure you're reading theirs correctly and picking up on if they're uncomfortable at all or on the contrary, if they're really enjoying something. And be aware of your own body language too. Not to the point of being like crippling awkward, but don't present yourself as too dominant or predatory. Be friendly and casual. Consent is always important for getting intimate, of course, but also just in general. Uh, don't always assume that you're on the same page. Keep communication open at all times, and this will help you get to know the person even better and avoid any uncomfortable situations. Get to know their personality before coming on to them. Make sure you actually like them. <laughs> Make sure your vibes match. This also lets them analyze you a little bit. Getting past this stage is obviously a good sign because it would be an entire waste of time otherwise. <laughs> if you're in a bar or a club or something, you might be able to get away with attraction due to looks being an intro to a conversation, but you still want to make sure there's chemistry. You can't have a successful relationship if you don't even like the person. And just a side note, I know a lot of guys complain about like friend zoning and how it sucks to be like trying to hit on someone and get friend zoned, but I hope you can imagine what it feels like to think you're being really, really good friends with someone and cherish that friendship and then suddenly it turns out that they just wanted to get with you the whole time. It's kind of heartbreaking. Um, I don't think women like to friend zone people as much as guys think. Um, so that is kind of a tricky territory to play, but I still think it's really, really important to get to know the person before expecting anything to come of it. Um, 
but also just be be true with your intentions just communicate that you know don't come off as braggy <laughs> it's one thing to be proud of your accomplishments and whatnot uh you know things that come up in normal conversations but from personal experience guys who brag about stuff barely show out a super common example is guys bragging about their money but refusing to spend any of it why should i be impressed at that point and before you judge me, if you're afraid of gold diggers, why mention the money in the first place, you know? If you brag about money and your love language is giving gifts, that could be really sweet. But let's be honest, that isn't the case most of the time, and it immediately shows your attention is elsewhere or that that other person is not worthy. And obviously, that's not gonna make anyone interested in you or feel good about themselves, and that's kind of like a key component to dating. <laughs> And speaking of love languages, learn theirs! Don't overdo it and try to take advantage of it because, like I mentioned before, you don't want to seem too eager or invested, but little things go a long way. There are five love languages, and I'll give little examples for all of them. If you think things are going well, try these out and read their body language. Physical touch. So physical touch can start small with things like holding hands or just ending the date with a hug acts of service. Offer to give them a ride or perhaps cook their favorite food. Gift giving. Gifts don't have to be expensive to be meaningful. Bring them flowers. Give them something small that reminds you of them or that they showed interest in. Quality time. Quality time seems easy enough, right? Free up your schedule for them. Plan lots of dates or days in to spend together. Or even if you're really busy and can't clear up your schedule for them, Reassure them that you want to spend time with them <laughs> and just try and really make it worth it when you do. Words of affirmation, pet names, and praise. Let them know they look amazing. Tell them you're impressed with skills they have. It's just so important to know your partner's love language so you can appreciate them exactly how they need you to. And my last tip, take rejection well, please. <laughs> Not everyone has to like you. Leaving things on good terms leaves options open in the future. It also shows who you really are when faced with obviously disappointing news. Are you mature? Are you still nice? What were your true intentions, you know? You are responsible for your own actions and responses and no one owes you anything. Move on and don't waste time mourning something that never was. Move on to the next thing. Hopefully some of this advice works for you. I don't know. <laughs> if you need help with like a specific situation, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try and help you out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hope this was helpful. I have no idea. It's been a while since I was dating. I've been in this relationship for quite some time now, but <laughs> from what I remember, this would all be really, really helpful stuff and definitely stuff that I would want to observe in someone who is coming on to me. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video and check out my other content with the link down below. Bye!